Hello everybody, this is the Sunny Machine. Today I wanted to go over some camera settings in OBS to help you guys get the best possible picture out of your equipment. And I'm going to be using two cameras today, uh, but whatever camera you have, these same principles apply. So I want you guys to know if it's a C920 or if it's the Avermedia 4K craziness or whatever camera you're using, these are the settings you want to at least try to dial in for your situation. I also want to note that this is a little bit more of an advanced video. So hopefully you already know how to set up uh, your camera to function and show up in OBS. Um, if you want a more basic video on how to set up devices and things in OBS, uh, let me know in the comments. We will be focusing on two things today. Lighting and your settings. Uh, lighting, number one, is the most important thing. You, no matter how good you get your settings in OBS, if you don't have good lighting, it's not going to look good. And for an example, without proper lights, your camera will not look as good. And I will turn off two of my lights that I have running and the other two. So this is what my camera looks like. This is the Avermedia PW513. It's the 4K camera and it does not look great without lights. You could have a great DSLR, you could have a great lens, but without good lighting your camera is not going to look that good. So lighting is actually the most important thing. I'm going to show you guys how to set up your camera so that even if it's a C920 it still looks pretty good. A lot of you are using a C920 or something similar, so the stuff in this video is going to actually help you get your camera set up properly. So I'm going to turn my lights back on, and I'll have a link in the description to these lights that I am using. I'm using four lights. Two of them are uh, RGB floodlights that are very affordable. I've mounted them to stands um, or a mic arm. And I've got two ring lights that I use to light, uh, to, to fill in the rest of the lighting for me. So if you're looking for good lights and you want your camera to look good, um, it's all about lighting if you don't have the proper lights. So with these lights set up like this, this camera looks very good. Let's go over my settings in OBS. So the first thing... I I need to tell you guys about is in OBS you want to double click on your camera or right click and go to properties and you want to get to this cam window. This camera setting window uh, will, where you select your camera is the window most of you seem to ignore. I've run into a lot of streamers where they have not changed the resolution FPS type to custom. They just leave it on default and that is definitely not what you want to do. You need to set this to custom and then you need to select your resolution. Keep in mind that your resolution is going to be tied to the performance of your computer and whatever USB port you're plugged into. So if you're having problems with the frame rate and you just can't get it dialed in, your resolution may be a little bit too high for your computer. So what you need to do is figure out the highest, most stable resolution that your computer can handle. So for the PW513, it's running over USB-C so it can handle a higher bit rate. So this resolution of 4K is not really something you want to do with the C920. We'll get to the C920 later and uh, I'll put a timestamp right now if you want to just jump ahead to C920 because we're going to cover a lot of the same information. Um, so, but Everything here, no matter what camera you have, is important. You need to set the resolution. You want to set the FPS to highest, unless you don't like the frame rate that you're set to. For instance, if I set this to 1080p, I can actually get 60 frames per second, but the image is kind of soft on the camera. So dropping the frame rate down to 48 frames per second on the camera actually brings back a lot of that sharpness. And since a lot of you are streaming at 48 anyway, that's fine. Um, video format, you want to set this to ARGB if you're running the cam engine connection for this camera. Um, you want to look for 
uh, RGB, XRGB, ARGB, that kind of stuff if you're running a, a much higher quality camera. For the C920, that's not going to be the case. Um, this really also depends on your USB bandwidth. You're not going to be able to have this set at some kind of crazy uh, color space for cheaper cameras because the USB bandwidth is not going to be able to handle it. For color space, I like to set this to 709 and I like to set the color range to full. And lastly, I turn the, d the buffering, I disable. You are also going to want to make sure that in your advanced settings in OBS that click on settings in OBS, go to advanced and check your color space and your color range. Make sure those are also on full. That's good for recording and that's also good um, for streaming. It's fine. Now we're going to look at the actual camera settings themselves for the PW513. We're going to start with gain and exposure because these are the things that are really going to impact your image quality the most. So you're going to want to go to the advanced tab in the under the video settings and I want to show you guys what messing with the exposure and gain kind of how it handles it with your camera. The exposure itself is tied to the update speed at which the camera is capturing information. So if you put the exposure lower then it will get a higher frame rate, so to speak. Um, and if you go too high, you're going to end up with this kind of low frame rate, unwatchable mess. So the trick here is to dial in the exposure to be as high as possible while still retaining that smooth frame rate feel. So this versus two versus three, Frame rate doesn't feel like it's changing at all. I'm not noticing any difference. Um, if it's just slightly better on three, then you know use three. If it looks fine at two, then use two. No, nope, no, no problem. I think it might be slightly better at three. So I'm going to leave it on three, and then I'm going to show you how the gain works. Once you've got your exposure dialed in, it's time to mess with gain. Now the thing with gain is you really want it to be as low as possible. That's where the lighting comes in. If I turn my lights off, I don't have enough lights now. I've only got two lights on me. I can compensate by adding gain, but you're going to notice that the image is going to become much worse. In fact, in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to turn the exposure down and I'm going to turn the gain way up. Now it's grainy. What this is, is digital noise because it's uh, a digital boost on the image itself. So gain adds noise. You really want as little gain as possible, which is why we're trying to put the exposure up at a nice spot. So uh, the frame rate's tolerable at negative two. It's not a huge difference between two and three. And now I can have my gain at, if I put my lights back on, pretty low. So. Gain helps you compensate for your lack of lighting, but it adds noise. Keep that in mind. And the last little things we want to go over is back in the basics tab, my settings here, I've got my contrast set to three, three, any, anywhere that looks okay. I mean, I, four is fine, three is good. Brightness doesn't seem to do anything for some reason when you're running the cam engine software. So if you need to change brightness, you can use a color correction filter in OBS, which we will get to. Saturation is going to give you more color or desaturate it and take the color out. So dial this in so that your skin tone looks pretty natural and things don't look strange. Sharpness, I like to add sharpness. As you can see, if I turn the sharpness down, things get really soft. It still looks good. But the reason I like to add sharpness is because in the encoding process to Twitch, it's going to soften up anyway. So I like to have things as crisp and sharp even if there's some artifacting a lot of that artifacting is going to go away once it gets encoded out to twitch um, and you may not even see it here on the youtube video next if you're using this camera you want to go to the filters section and you want to enable filters the skin tone i don't it doesn't really seem to affect skin tone as much as it has add some clarity to the picture so i like to add a little bit on the skin tone slider and the smoothness kind of counteracts the sharpness filter and kind of adds a smoothing filter. I don't like too much of that. A little bit's okay, so six. Um, 
So that's it for the PW513 camera if you're going to set that up. Make sure that you've dialed in these settings and these settings. So now we're going to move on to the horrible blown out picture that you see up here. <laughs> and this is the C920. This is what your C920 looks like if you've just plugged it in and you've done nothing to it at all. With proper lighting, no matter what, you still have to dial in your settings. So let's look at the settings for the C920. Again, I'm just going to drop this over to how most of you guys have it, put it on default, and th it's the same mess. It's the same horrible mess. But even worse, if we look at it, it's not even high resolution now. It's some 4x3 low quality resolution. It looks bad. So how do we fix this? Well, change this to custom. And then you've got a bunch of resolutions in here, but going too high on the C920 is not going to be a good idea. Uh, and as you can see, frame rate with uh, YUY2 is atrocious the highest FPS available is two frames per second. So don't, you don't want to use this. Um, even in 1920 by 1080, it can look okay, but the image quality difference between 1920 by 1080 is only slight compared to 720. I think you could still get a really great image uh, out of 720p. Um, so I actually recommend, if you really want to give your computer a bit of a break, 720p is fine. It doesn't look fine yet, but we'll make it look fine. So, again, you want the FPS to be set to highest. Video format, this is where you want to select MJPEG. MJPEG is going to be the easiest on your computer, on the USB bus, so that you get a smooth frame rate. It doesn't slow down if your computer starts to get bogged down as much. So, uh, color space 709, color range full, buffering disabled. Now the last little bit here, if you really want to dial the picture in properly, we're going to have to hit configure video. And this is where things really start to get kind of a pain, first of all. These settings are not going to save in between reboot. They're not going to save um, even after, if you disable the camera and re-enable it, anytime you the camera does not save these settings these settings have to be adjusted every time now there is some way to kind of help with this and that's if you download ghub now i'll bring ghub down here and if if you install ghub you'll see your camera is in here what you want to do is you you want to set up a you click this little drop down box and you add a new camera mode i have one here called obs and you do that in the video tab as well so you add a new filter and you add OBS. You can rename it by typing up here um, because if you add a new camera mode, it's just going to say new camera mode. So you highlight this text, you say OBS, and then you know you save that. So I've got, now I've got two OBSs. We're going to get rid of that one. So we're going to go to this one. Um, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the priority is set to frame rate. It's going to be set to exposure most likely on its own, and you don't want that. You want frame rate. Frame rate uh, will prioritize the exposure so that you get better frame rate versus a brighter image. Um, we're going to turn off auto exp exposure and we're going to turn off autofocus. And this exposure setting is where the first thing that needs to change here. So as you can see, I am super blown out. Um, so what we want to do is look for that frame rate thing again. Right, so if you go too high, see how the frame rate is freaking out. So we're gonna come down, we're gonna come down. Frame rate looks better. Uh, frame rate, the image looks better, but I don't know that the frame rate is actually better. So that looks like about the highest that we can go without sacrificing uh, frame rate. So we're gonna go to the video tab and we're gonna leave brightness and contrast right at 50. You're gonna pump the sharpness up on these cameras. They are not sharp but they can be. Uh, white balance, you're going to set that, you're not, not going to set that to auto if you can help it. Auto white balance can be okay if you have decent lighting, um, but it also can make things look really yellow and terrible like that. 
Um, so what you really want to do is figure out, and I wish there was actual numbers here, but just kind of put it where it looks right now. It's not going to not going to be able to dial it in yet because if you notice, we still have this really blown out picture. It doesn't look great. So we'll bring this back in a second because it'll make more sense after we set this. Now if you look at the properties here, if you click configure video, you can get this properties window up. Um, the gain is all the way up. So this is, this is where most of our problem is. And this backlight compensation is turned on. So you want to turn that off. Let's also go to the camera control tab and we're going to make sure low light compensation is off. That is a massive. Please make sure that is unchecked. Um, the rest of these settings will get pulled over and so you can use G-Hub to make sure that you have settings that are working for you. Um, let me get G-Hub back. So if we're looking at G-Hub again, now we've got a little bit better of a picture to kind of look at. I like to add a little bit of saturation and we can kind of dial in the white balance better now. Uh, oh, looks like the, the gain, see the gain freaked out. It jumped back up. So as soon as you start doing this, it starts using the auto gain settings. So really, you gotta go in here, make sure the gain is good, make sure the backlight compensation is off, and then try to dial in the white balance a little bit. And again, it's gonna freak out. So there's no good way to do this, unfortunately. Once you you get the white balance right where it is, all you have to do is open OBS, then open G Hub, and basically your camera is going to look bad at first. So you've opened OBS for the first time and your camera doesn't look quite right. What you need to do is you're gonna go and you're gonna open G Hub now, and you're just gonna toggle the zoom. Boop. And now all the settings that you've saved in G Hub are now sent over to the camera. But as we know, the gain and the backlight compensation is totally wrong, unfortunately. So you need to go into your C920 properties, the camera properties in OBS, click configure video, get this window back open, turn off that backlight compensation and turn down the gain. We don't need that much gain with this much lighting, not even close. And now we have a much better image. It's not as good as the PW513, but this is actually a pretty great image and I've almost got zero gain going. So the trick is good lighting and good settings on the camera. It's kind of a pain dealing with the C920. I wish G-Hub had an actual gain slider and backlight compensation slider so that you could toggle and set those properly and then you wouldn't need to go in to the camera settings and configure anything. But unfortunately, that's just the nature of the situation. But you can get a really nice, clean image out of the C920. This is just the C920. If we go back to the Avermedia, yeah, it's 4K. It's got better color depth. But if you're using a C920, this is a very good picture is very acceptable and you could even uh, turn down your lights a bit if you need to so I hope this helps I hope you guys can uh, find a good spot balancing your camera if I turn down the exposure I can turn up the gain a little bit but remember gain adds noise so if you're looking for proper camera settings for the C920 it's really about getting into these tools in OBS and playing with them properly. If you get your image quality set up right and these settings, you're going to have a much easier time after that dialing in your camera. I hope that helps. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you're interested in joining IQ, go to infinitequality.live. That's where we discuss things like this and we figure out how to get your settings. Hopefully someday someone drops a link to some program that helps us set the C920 up with one click. That would be amazing. That's the dream. If you know about that program, leave it in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you in the next video.